r slash ask reddit what is a movie cliche that you never really see a room full of five plus people that have a conversation that flows perfectly and isn't just people constantly talking over each other i love that always sunny doesn't follow this rule it's so realistic i mean if a group of close friends are arguing and joking it usually turns into every person just yelling their joke or comment at the group people turning the water on in a shower while standing directly under it when two characters get out of a car and one says so what are we doing here, where are we, or what's the plan, as if they didn't just have the entire car ride to discuss this, I've never had a friend say I'll explain later, and then sit silently in traffic until we get there and then okay so here the deal. One of the men are great things and swingers, they get all excited to go to Vegas, exclaiming Vegas baby, and then you get the shots in the car along the way where they look super bored. Vince Vaughn meekly mumbling Vegas baby trying to stay hyped during the hours long car ride. People taking like 20 stronger punches right on the chin like nothing. And no injury to bare hands. The head is pretty close to the hardest and most durable part of your body. Punching it with your fist tears up your knuckles and often breaks fingers. Adding to this. Fighting lots of people in a short time frame in general. Even if you don't take any punches. Fighting is very physically demanding. Unless you train and fight at a professional level, you'll be gassed well before the end of the house fight sequence from the first John Wick movie. Seriously doubt that black market arms dealers and terrorists conduct 90% of their business in the middle of a club full of strangers with techno music blaring. No matter what crowded city or time of day it is, there will always be an open parking spot right exactly in front of wherever they're driving to. 35 minutes of them circling the parking lot. That guy's coming out. Quick, over there. Grab that lot. Oh, man. That granny got it first. Turning the TV onto the correct channel at exactly the right moment to catch a relevant, potentially life-changing news broadcast from the very beginning. Or if they aren't, they get an immediate convenient phone call saying are you watching channel 4? No one ever wants to give their partner the benefit of the doubt. So many characters get caught doing something seemingly suspicious that could be explained justified by giving context. But, of course, no one wants to take the 10 seconds to hear it. If you're already, accidentally or not, eavesdropping on someone then stay at least until you have enough context to understand what the hell they're saying. All this I've heard enough. The wedding is off. Tim. Is BS. Or, they instantly jump to the worst conclusion. Eventually everything comes together and they realize they're so never did anything wrong. Apologize and their so instantly takes them back. Despite them clearly having no trust in their so. I can explain. 30 minutes later. Still hasn't explained. Or the alternative. Where the whole problem could be done and over with after an explanation. But the other party just makes a big fuss and huge assumptions and never gives an option to explain. This one irks me the most. I used to watch a lot of soap operas and every time they got the chance to explain something that would fix everything, they wouldn't. 19 year old part timer at a fast food restaurant, living by themselves in a luxurious two bedroom apartment downtown in a major city. This one seems realistic. I've seen house hunters. Mike is a dandelion farmer and Jill is a part time yoga instructor. Their budget is 1.7 million dollars. Joe is a gerbil psychologist, and Annie staples leaves back onto trees. Their budget is 1.28 million dollars. And they've decided to up and move across the planet. There's no time to explain. Well, I mean, in the same time it took to say that, you could have said there's a man chasing after me, or we have to get to the hospital, or literally any other simple phrase that gives a general idea of what the hell is happening. This is so ducking true, like even a half asset explanation is better than nothing. In every emergency I've ever been in I've never once said there's no time to explain. Like I'd say at least we need to call an ambulance. So and so is hurt or I need to leave. I'm feeling really scared. Person A. How do I know that I can trust you? Person B. You don't. Person A immediately proceeds to trust person B. This is my favorite one because it's so true. I can even hear it in my head, the music playing in the background as person B smolders after delivering that line, as person A gives them a knowing look of trust. 
someone who stalks their crush, and not only doesn't wind up on the wrong side of an arrest warrant and or a restraining order, but actually gets into a relationship with that person, who clearly doesn't think they're a creep. Onion headline a while back, local man arrested for romantic comedy behavior. Physical bullying in high school, like throwing drinks, stuffing people in lockers, etc. Maybe it's my school but bullying is almost always psychological, rumors, mean comments and jokes, and exclusions. I went to 5 different schools, there was some bullying but I've only been physically touched once and never really heard of anyone getting physical. Kids are just dongs with their words. Might be a different time, but I went to HS in the late 90s in Massachusetts, and the kids on the bus were mean. Really physical bullies. One time they broke a window by smashing a kid into the wall so hard it dented outwards and a crack ran up the glass. The nerdy girl letting her hair down and suddenly becoming hot. I mean, she's got paint on her overalls. What even is that? Getting knocked out cold and being perfectly fine. Being knocked out long enough for someone to drive you to another location. You would have some serious brain damage if you were knocked out for that long. Even worse, people waking up from a coma and then just walk it off like it's nothing. Maybe a half an hour and a shrug and everything is back to normal. I guess OP is asking for movie cliches that never happen in real life but there actually are some classic movie cliches that somehow became cliches while almost never actually being used in any movies. The two that immediately come to mind are the bandit tying the damsel to a train track, was only used in a couple of very obscure early silent shorts, and mysteries where it turns out the butler did it, has been used ironically a few times but someone did a survey once and only turned up one minor Agatha Christie novel that used this trope earnestly. I also had a student ask me once which movie it was that started the cliche of a private eye sitting at his desk with a bottle of hooch when a dame walks in who looked like trouble and was shocked when I realized I couldn't name a single movie that actually begins that way in earnest, though, again, it's been used ironically a few times. Incidentally, I don't think any of those cliches ever happen much in real life either, so double whammy. Having a table full of breakfast in the morning and taking only a strip of bacon in a rush to school work. Yeah if my parents ever made me something like that when I was at school I'd just be late to school. Duck that. In fairness, I doubt any mother wouldn't know what time their kid needs to leave for school in real life. Usually they'd be telling the kid. The meat cute where two folks bump into each other at the grocery store and end up chatting, then dating, then breaking up over a misunderstanding, then getting back together. I actually had a meet cute happen once, but at a time I was unavailable, was riding the C train in Calgary, was selling cars at the time so was in my suit and coat, it's winter, and there's only one other person at the stop with me, a girl in a winter coat and a super colorful tutu and tights, so I say dress for the weather you want, not the one you have, am I right, and she laughs and tells me she's going to a bachelorette party and they're all wearing tutus, we talk the whole train ride get to her stop and she asked if I'd like to join but ultimately had to turn her offer down as I had a girlfriend at home waiting to yell at me. We didn't get along and were on the verge of splitting up but your boy is a faithful beach. Once, and only once, has this happened in my life and I wonder where Tuta girl is today. No smoke when there is fire. Depends on the kind of fire. A well made campfire burning hot will produce almost no smoke. A house fire though, yeah, all kinds of nasty materials partially combusting will produce a lot of greasy black smoke. Your handgun has 52 bullets before reloading. And you can get shot anywhere and then just walk away and deal with it later. I don't think I've ever seen one person miss a basketball shot in a movie, ever, except in basketball movies. People hanging up the phone without saying goodbye. You've obviously never talked to an Irish grandmother on the phone. My mum calls her back just to say bye mum. A woman giving birth to an obviously 6 month old baby. That one's probably for cost reasons. You're about to go on stage in front of many people. You're nervous and kind of mess up for whatever reason. Like you touch the mic and it makes that obnoxious loud sound. The crowd may start booing. Then however you perform brilliantly, like you didn't just embarrass yourself in front of 200 people, and when you're done, someone starts clapping slowly and then everyone joins. 
you win the competition and get to go out with your crush. Mike gives feedback when you first speak into it, then works perfectly for the rest of the performance. Also your voice sounds angelic and flawless, almost like it was pre-recorded. I'm trying to get in shape. I would really prefer a 3 minute montage instead of the way I'm doing it right now. Food fights. Who didn't want a food fight as a kid? I actually had one in elementary school. What they don't show is the week of cleaning all the kids were forced to do in the essay we had to write to the janitors and lunch staff. People talking in a small group about someone. A hush falls over the group. Then the actor asks, he's standing behind me, isn't he? This actually happened to me. I was in a small cafe in my hometown and came across some acquaintances from high school. The conversation eventually changes to be about some guy that had beef with me. I was all like but he's in jail which was the rumor I had been hearing. The guy I was taking to shifted his eyes to focus right behind me. I heard him chuckle behind me and I noped out of there real fast. If somebody accidentally misspeaks or fumbles over their words in a movie or TV show. It always is of great importance, and characters always just read way more into dialogue than people do in real life. Bit of a curveball but my girlfriend always points out how if someone leaves a voicemail where they say how much they love their girlfriend wife husband etc, then they're basically dying in the next scene. I am now terrified of leaving her voicemails. I love Sons of Anarchy but one thing always bugged me about it. Motorcycle chase scenes with old Impalas or similar vehicles. Even larger motorcycles can accelerate and corner much better than a car from the 70s. Everyone is a gourmet chef in movies. Most people in real life struggle to follow the directions on a microwave TV dinner. Either I did not understand your question, or most of the replies are the opposite of what you are asking except for the banana peel guy. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.